so it's the turn to take up the first five mark question of a set three so this was question number 25 in this question also we had choice so this is the first choice of question number 25 and the part a of that choice this wants us to describe briefly the process of transferring the charge between the two plates of a parallel plate capacitor when connected to a battery further this part of the question wants us to derive an expression for the energy stored in the capacitor now both the parts of this question are of two and a half mark so let's have a look onto the solution for this part of the question so first we will be explaining the process of charging a capacitor so for that you can see you need to write that when plate a and b of a parallel plate capacitor are connected to the terminal of a battery what happens the battery sets up electric field in the connecting wires the electric field drives charge q from plate b connected to the negative terminal of the battery to plate A connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So what this battery is doing, this is driving the charge from the plate which is connected to the negative terminal to the plate which is connected to the positive terminal and this is how this charging of capacitor is taking place. The charge transfer will take place till the potential difference across the capacitor becomes equal to the EMF of the battery. So what will be that? V will be equal to Q by C where Q is going to be the charge that is transferred and C is the capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor. Further, this question wants you to derive the expression for the energy stored in the capacitor. Now we need to do the derivation for that. So for that you can see that what is going to be the total energy. Let us suppose DQ is the charge that is transferred from one plate to the other so what will happen what is going to be the small amount of work done in that case that will simply be equal to vdq and if you want to calculate the total work done which will be equal to the energy stored in the capacitor you need to integrate this from the limit zero to q because q is the total charge that is transferred from one plate to the other okay so when you will write this V in terms of Q and C that will be equal to Q by C. Now this C is constant so this will not get integrated. Integration of this Q dQ will come out to be Q square by 2 and when you will put the limits this comes out to be Q square by 2C. So what is going to be the energy stored that will simply be equal to Q square by 2C. So let me just show you the marking scheme for this part of the question so you are going to get one mark for explaining the charging of capacitor and then you will be given one and half mark for the derivation of energy stored in the capacitor and this is how you are going to get two and half mark for this part of the question let's have a look onto the second part of the same choice of the question so here we have the part b this says a parallel plate capacitor is charged by a battery to a potential difference V. It is disconnected from the battery and then connected to another uncharged capacitor of the same capacitance. Further, this question wants us to calculate the ratio of the energy stored in the combination to the initial energy on the single capacitor. See, when we will be having a capacitor, we will charge it to some voltage what is going to happen it is going to store some energy now when you will disconnect it from the battery and connect it to another capacitor what is going to happen there is going to be the redistribution of charges and hence there is going to be the redistribution of energy also and hence when you will calculate the final energy or the energy stored by the combination that is going to be different than the energy stored by the single initial capacitor and in this case we need to find out the ratio of these two let's have a look onto the solution so first of all as i have told you that there is going to be the distribution of the charges between the capacitors so if i say small q charge is transferred from one capacitor to the other 
then what will happen we are connecting one capacitor in parallel to the other capacitor you can see it here and then connect it to another uncharged capacitor of the same capacitance so when you will be connecting these two capacitors together the potential difference across these capacitor will remain the same so when you will equate the potential difference across the two capacitors what it is going to be see the charge which is given to the other capacitor is a small q so the potential on that capacitor is going to be small q by c now what is going to be the charge on the initial capacitor that is going to be cv minus q by c why cv because cv was the total initial charge so cv minus q by c when you will equate these two you will calculate the charge which is given or which is distributed to the other capacitor comes out to be cv by 2 okay now what is the energy stored in the combination energy stored in the combination of capacitors whether it's a series combination or the parallel combination is the sum of the energy stored in the individual capacitors okay so when you will calculate the final energy stored in this combination that comes out to be cv square by 4 and we already have calculated the initial energy which is half cv square so when you will take the ratio of these two this is going to be the final result that is half now let me just show you the marking scheme for this particular part of the question so for calculating the charge transfer you are going to get half mark for calculating the energy stored in the combination you are going to score one mark and then finally calculating the ratio you are again going to get one mark for this so this is how you are going to get Two and a half mark for this particular part of the question, and five out of five mark for this question. Now here we just have discussed the first choice of question number twenty-five. Let's move on to the next choice of the same question. So here we have the next choice of question number twenty-five, which again have two parts A and B. Part A says derive an expression for the electric field at any point on the equatorial line of an electric dipole, and this part of the question will fetch you two and half mark. You must be thinking that it is similar to question number sixteen. I will say yes, it is. But in question number sixteen, it was not mentioned to us in the question that we need to find out the electric field at. the point that lies on the equatorial line it was written over there that you need to calculate the electric field at the point that lies at the distance equal to y from the axial line of the electric dipole so let's have a look on to the derivation of this part of the question so you will be writing let p be an equatorial point for a dipole consisting of charges minus q and plus q with the separation 2a So here in this figure you can see minus q and plus q are the charges separated by a distance 2a and this is a point p that i have considered on the equatorial line at a distance r from the center of this dipole okay now here further we will be calculating the electric field at point p due to the positive as well as due to the negative charge so here you can see i have written the expression for the electric field due to the positive charge and this is going to be the expression for the electric field due to the negative charge now as per the superposition principle what is going to be the electric field at point p that is going to be the vector sum of these two so you will see that the component of the electric field due to symmetry in the y direction is going to cancel out each other and hence the net electric field is going to be only in the x direction and that too in the negative x direction so this will be 2e cos theta you can write here either e plus or e minus because the magnitude of electric field at point p due to both the charges plus and the negative is same so here when you will substitute the value of cos theta this is going to be the final expression that you will get and you can write this particular expression in the vector form like this so this is going to be minus p 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not divided by a square plus r square raised to the power 3 by 2 now for very short electric dipole what is going to happen 
A is going to be much smaller than the distance of the point P from the center of the dipole and hence this A can be neglected and you will get the net electric field at point P in the vector form like this. So, I hope this derivation is quite clear to you. You are going to fetch two and half mark for writing this complete derivation. Okay. So, you will be getting one mark for calculation of the electric field due to the positive charge, one mark for the calculation of the electric field due to the negative charge and you will be getting half mark for this final result. So, you will be getting two and half mark for this complete derivation. Now, let us move on to the part B of the same choice of question number 25. This says two identical point charges Q each are kept two meter apart in air. A third point charge capital Q of unknown magnitude and sign is placed on the line joining the charges such that the system remains in equilibrium find the position and the nature of Q. So, here you can have a look onto the solution. You can see here that to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between the point charges Q, capital Q must be placed at the center of the line segment joining the two charges. You can see here in this figure. So, this is small q, this is small q separated by a distance of 2 meter. Okay? Both are like charges, they are repelling each other and they are also going to repel this third charge. So, if you want to eliminate their repulsion, the third charge must be placed at the center. Okay? So, now the sign of the Q must be opposite to that of Q because if you will place the Q and Q is positive that will be repelled by this charge and Q will again be repelled by this charge. But in this particular case Q will be in equilibrium but other two charges will not be in equilibrium. Other two charges will be equilibrium only if the charge Q will be of opposite nature, this Q should be negative because Q is negative then this positive charge is going to attract it and this positive charge is also going to attract it and if I have a look on to the force experienced by this charge, this capital Q charge is going to attract it while this is going to repel it and hence the force will be 0 on these two charges also. So, you have to keep this thing in your mind that the Q that is capital Q charge that you are placing in between the charges should be of opposite nature. Okay? Now, to calculate the magnitude of this capital charge Q, we are going to consider one of the charges and we will apply here the equilibrium condition. So, let me take this charge which is small q. Now, this charge and this charge are going to repel each other and the force of interaction will be given by K Q1 Q2 by R square. So, this will be K. Both are small q. So, this will be Q square divided by R. What is the distance? That is 2 meter. So, this will be 2 square. Now, on this charge, what is the force experienced by this charge due to this capital Q? That is going to be K Q capital Q divided by the distance which is 1 meter. So, this is 1 square. Okay? So, the sum of these two should be 0 so that this charge will be in equilibrium or the complete system is in equilibrium. Okay? So, when you will solve this, you will calculate the value of Q and that comes out to be minus Q by 4. So, from this calculation also, you can see that this charge that we are placing is having the opposite nature as of the given charges. Okay? So, this is minus Q by 4. Now, Q must be placed at a distance of 1 meter from each charge that is small q. So, I hope this explanation of this question is also very clear to you. You are again going to score 2 and half mark for this question. You will be getting 1 mark for writing this equation. You will be getting 1 mark for the calculation. So, you will be getting the final half mark for writing this line that Q must be placed at a distance of 1 meter from each charge small q. So, this is how you are going to score 2 and a half mark for this particular part of the question and 5 out of 5 mark.
for this choice of the question. I hope this discussion of question number 25 is clear to you. Let's move on to the discussion of the next question.